So we're going to learn about four periodic trends, and we hopefully have a paper ready to put these notes in that looks like this. We've got four tabs, one for each of the trends we're going to be looking at. And the four periodic trends we're looking at are really a consequence of the electron configurations that we've been learning about. The first of those four periodic trends we're going to learn about is atomic radius. And for each of these trends, we're going to just write the name of the property that we're discussing on the front. And then we open up the page, we're going to write its definition and show what the pattern is across the periodic table. So the definition of atomic radius is probably pretty intuitive. It's about how big an atom it is. And the only problem is that it's a little bit difficult to measure atoms directly. And so the way atomic radius is defined, or one of the ways that atomic radius can be defined, is one half the distance between two atoms of the same element that are bonded together. So I'm going to write one half the distance that's called the internuclear distance. I'll put that in parentheses. So one half the distance or the internuclear distance. Between two bonded atoms of the same element. And I'm going to draw a small sketch just to try to illustrate that. The distance that we're measuring here would be the distance between two nuclei. So I've tried to draw that about halfway between the center of one and the center of the other. However, I probably didn't do a spectacular job there. Of course, the reason we have to define it like this is that the atom itself has an electron cloud with sort of fuzzy edges or boundaries that are difficult to define. So this internuclear distance is how atomic radius is defined. What I'm going to do next is draw a sketch of the periodic table and just show the trend that ex exhibited. And this is kind of what the periodic table looks like. And if you just want to draw a rectangle instead, without paying attention to some of the little dips and valleys that are shown here, then that's fine. But notice the arrow that I'm drawing here shows the direction in which atomic radius increases. So increasing atomic radius in that direction means that the largest element is going to be down in the bottom left-hand corner, and that would be francium or francium. So that's the first of our four periodic trends. Next, we're going to talk about ionization energy. And as the name implies, it's the amount of energy associated with ionization. Well, what's ionization? The process of making an ion. But does that mean making an anion or making a cation? Specifically, since this is going to be defined as the amount of energy it takes to lose an electron or to remove an electron from an atom, then it should make sense that we could think of it as cationization energy because when we remove electrons, we make cations. That's how we're going to define ionization energy. The amount of energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. Now, I should include the words or ion because it's true that we could, after we've removed the first electron, try to remove the second and so on. So sometimes we will refer to these as first ionization energy, second ionization energy, third ionization energy, and so on. However, the only pattern that we're going to be examining is that of first ionization energy. And that means we're trying to remove an electron from a neutral atom. 
And it's much easier to remove an electron from, for instance, fluorine, which tends to lose electrons anyway, excuse me, from sodium, which tends to lose electrons anyway, than it is from fluorine, which tends to gain them. And so the trend should make sense. I'm going to draw a large rectangle once again to represent the periodic table. And there's the kind of shape that it has, more or less. And I'm going to show that ionization energy increases in this direction with helium being the element with the largest ionization energy. Two down and two to go. Let's talk about the next periodic trend we want to examine. The next periodic trend that we're going to look at is one that ends up being especially important in second semester, and that is electronegativity. And that's a long word, which I barely fit across this page. Electronegativity can be thought of as electron greediness. We'll define electronegativity as the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself in a bond. So the definition is going to be the ability of an element to attract electrons to itself in a chemical bond. A good way to think about this is electron greediness or electron hogging. And it should also make sense what the pattern is going to be. Here's the periodic table once again. Electronegativity is also going to increase in this direction, but it terminates with fluorine. And the reason it does not terminate with helium is helium, while it has a high ionization energy, is not particularly electron greedy. You know that helium already has a full valence shell, and so it isn't likely to gain electrons and it also doesn't form bonds, making this entire thing moot. As a matter of fact, the electronegativity for helium is really undefined, as it is for most mobile, noble gases. Electronegativity, like I said, is an important idea for a lot of other concepts in second semester. It shouldn't be confused with something called electron affinity, which is a slightly different concept. And I've decided to not examine electron affinity this year just to, or an MRCM, just to keep things simpler um, and not introduce confusion for these two ideas, but instead to just look at one other periodic trend, which is density. And of course, we know what density is. Density is simply mass divided by volume. So our definition is going to be very simple. And here's what the pattern looks like. I'm going to draw a periodic table again. And show a slightly different or more complicated pattern for density. Density tends to increase as we get towards the middle and the bottom of the periodic table with osmium and iridium being some of the densest elements. And that should make sense if we think about how the masses of elements change as we go across a period or down a group, and how the volume of the electron cloud changes as well as we go from unpaired to paired electrons and we consider filling the orbitals that we've learned about. So there are four periodic trends that we should be familiar with. They are atomic radius, ionization energy, electronegativity, and density.